Are you excited about the Lord? Before we allow uh, Nicholas to do what he's about to do, uh, while in worship, the Lord gave me a glimpse of something that I, I've been instructed to share with you. We have entered into a season as a ministry, and the Lord showed me an open heaven, and there was rain coming down. Rain represents certain things. It represents a, a newness, a freshness. But the Spirit of God said that there's this rain that I saw. It's rain that represents the anointing of God. And God said that there's a fresh anointing about to hit the place. There's an anointing that, that will remove burdens and destroy yokes at a high level. So the Lord reminded me to remind you, you were instructed a while back to turn up your faith. The Lord said, move from being cheerleaders to being people that expect him to do things for you. So I need something from you. I, I need for you to make some spiritual adjustments and stop showing up as spectators. I, I, I need for you to come in with the intent that God is going to do something that is going to blow your mind. Some of you are so accustomed to watching people receive the blessing to where you don't even expect it. The Lord is saying, turn up your expectation because the days of you being overlooked have passed. There are blessings with your name on them that's coming to your address. Some of them will be so big to where you will question whether or not it's for me. The Lord is saying, receive it. Ask questions later. It might not look like you. It might not feel like it's yours. But I'm telling you, it's coming to you. You receive it and get the details of it later. Yeah. Yeah. I need for you to trust him. I need for you to, to trust him. Keep that same atmosphere of worship. Two, two, one, two. You guys can hear me? Can you guys hear me? Oh, there it is. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, sound man, really quickly before we just enter into this place, can you give me just a little bit of reverb on this mic? Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Can we just keep that same atmosphere of worship? That may look like a, uh, a lifted hand to you. That may look like a opening of your mouth. For some, that may be an internal introspection on the goodness of God. But right where you're at, can we just lift our voices? This isn't a, a Pastor Leo said it best. This isn't spectator. This isn't spectator. What I love about heaven and the atmosphere of heaven. 
<laughs> the angels cry holy. <laughs> the elders cast down their crowns before the Lord. So why not, let, let's join in with that right now. Come on, as the elders cast down their crowns, they're laying aside their qualifications. <laughs> Anything that you could exalt yourself in his presence, lay it down now <laughs> before the great Jehovah. space for you to sing your own song to the Lord, for you to, to open up yourself to the Lord.
special about your holy is that we don't have to know all that's happening as we're waiting in his presence. But we can trust and believe that his presence is doing the work on us. spouse or your friend to just speak well of you, just right there, just find something. You can find one thing and just begin to repeat it to him. I promise you, he won't get tired of it.
us an organization that you need to forgive. Whatever it is, the Lord is coming now. And he's saying, give it to me, my child. Give it to me, my child. Come on, just do business with the Lord right now. Give it to me, my child. to me, my child. Give it to me, my child. I desire to take you higher. Give it to me, my child. Give it to me, my child. Give it to me, my child. such a realm of the friendship of God 
lines. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm going to sing this. And if you don't, let it just wash over you. And we'll end on this. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear.
Come on, that's the word of the Lord over this house. Everything to God in prayer. Come on, he's revitalizing your prayer life even now. Everything to God in prayer. We bring everything to God in prayer. <laughs> we have a privilege. Come on, that's what I love about old school. They would appreciate the blood. Everything to God in prayer. Come on, the veil was torn. The veil was torn. Everything to God in prayer. Come on, this is when you get excited that death and sin was holding you back, but Jesus came and he gave his sacrifice to you. Everything to God in prayer. Everything to God in prayer. We can bring it to you. We can bring it to you. We have a privilege. Everything to God in prayer. Everything to God in prayer. Come on. Don't let your thanksgiving don't go down. Let your, don't let your worship go down. Everything to God in prayer. Come on, with his sacrifice, he tore the veil, and he gave you the ability to be son of God. He gave you the ability to be free from depression, be free from anxiety, be free from the cares of this world, everything to God in prayer. Come on, no matter how long you've been saved, if that even, even how long you've been saved should be a measure of how much more you should be praising him, everything to God in prayer. Come on, because you got skin in the game, that means you should be praising him all the more. Come on, he rescued you. He ransomed you. He came and he gave his life for you. Everything to God in prayer. Come on, you don't have to know how, exactly how to do it. Just begin to thank him. Come on, there's no right way to praise him. Come on, it's a heart posture. Come on, everything to God in prayer. Come on, he said Thanksgiving is the way of entering in. Thanks, thanks, Thanksgiving is the way of entering into the gates. Let's enter into the gates together. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everything to God in prayer. Come on, there's some of you that your life was jacked up before the Lord came and met and ransomed you. You should be giving God prayer. <laughs> Everything to God in prayer. A thousand tongues. <laughs> Couldn't thank you enough. A thousand tongues. And a thousand languages. Couldn't praise you enough. But we still thank you, Jesus. <laughs> we still thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you for your love. <laughs> I want to thank you for your kindness. Thank you for protection. Every hour. I want to thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for protection. Every hour. An accident on the way here. Come on, you guys gotta think of the possibilities. The enemy wants to take you out. Come on, Pastor Leo said it. But God, I want to thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for protection. Every hour. I thank you for your love. Thank you for protection Every hour <laughs> I just heard this <laughs> You do all things well You do all things well Come on, you have to remind yourself We get so caught up in the carnal We have to remind ourselves of the truth well you do
some heart trouble, you're going through some pain, you're going through something carnal, something of this realm. The Bible says to put your mind on things above. <laughs> so the next time you're consumed with everything that has to do with you, like, I just can't do this. I'm overwhelmed. This ain't working right now. I don't even want to think about this. Congratulations. You don't have to. <laughs> you're already on the right track. You don't have to think about it. All you got to do is put your mind on things above. Put your mind on his goodness. Begin to thank him for his love. Come on, everything that you're lacking. You're lacking peace. Thank him for his peace. <laughs> you do all things well. You do all things well. Well, it takes faith to be able to sing that even in the midst of it all. You do all things well. Let me remind you of your Bible. This is the righteous shall live by faith. Come on, live by faith right now. Uh, you do all things well. Come on, no music. I want the people to sing it. You do all things well. You do all things well. You do all things well. time you do all things you do all things you do I hear the Lord saying, Ashes to beauty. I hear him saying that those places in your life that don't look like they amount to anything. He's going to make them beautiful. I hear him saying, take your eyes off of everything that don't matter and put your eyes on him. Some of you need to learn how to rest. You have packed on life troubles like a like you are a human mule. The Lord says it's time to unload it. The Lord is saying that it is time for you to set aside those things that are hindering you. Everybody 
has gone through something. But really the scripture that says that and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony, it doesn't happen if you're not if you don't go through something. Learn how to to rest and and learn how in moments like this when you when when when, when the spirit of the Lord visits the room learn how to not sit on the bench but learn how to get in the water because there will be many days like this in our future where the water will be troubled and you're going to need to get in the water because our God has something oh if you could just see what I say it is absolutely amazing. And yes, you qualify. Stop saying I messed up so bad to where even God couldn't fix this. If you and I wasn't going to mess up, there would not have been any need for the Lord Jesus to come. He paid the ransom for not what you did now, but all the way into your future. The ransom has already been paid for you to live an amazing life. Give your Jesus a big round of applause. <laughs> and, and, I, and I hope you understand that you, you got something special today yeah. yeah not that we don't get it all the time but sometimes there's a moment set aside that's, that, 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 that's just it's tailored for, for you sometimes you don't need to hear Pastor Leo or Pastor Norman's voice sometimes you, you need to be in a quiet state to, where you can hear his voice and but because his voice will penetrate your heart it will reignite those things that you placed on the shelves that you think are no longer possible he'll help your life to make sense in a language that you understand amen uh, thank you so much sir thank you so much put your hands together And we're not going to do the offering. You all know what we do. Uh, I, I would not interrupt this moment talking about an offering. I want you to take what you've got and I want you to walk out the building and take it in your cars and take it into your homes. Uh, you know how we give, so do what you normally do. Those of you that are viewing online, I pray that it was a blessing to you like it was to us that are in the house. And I want to encourage you to believe big, understand that all things are still possible to those that believe. Don't you dare turn your believer off. There are things that your God wants to do, but he needs your participation as well as your cooperation in order to be able to take you to the place that you were created to be. Give Jesus another big round of applause. that you were in the presence of God. Um, the thing that I failed to mention earlier is that uh, Minister Nicholas that's on the keys, he is a prophet. He's not just a worshiper, but a prophet that brings forth the word of God. And the things that you have just been in, in, uh, allowing God to come in, take those words as Pastor Leo said and take them with you and just allow God to permeate your heart and the things that God wants to do in you and to know that God met you, that you, God knew you were going to be here, knew he was going to be here, that there was going to be a message, a word for you, the things that he has spoken, I pray that you have received them, that you have grabbed hold to them and allowed them to be able to permeate your heart and change your situation. Praise God. And
this midst of this Thanksgiving year, this Thanksgiving yeah. week. Yeah. We would like to wish all of you a, a, a happy, pleasant happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And, and make sure that while you're cut, carving the turkey and you're eating the dressing and all this, make sure that you just pause for a moment and thank your God for being an amazing God who made it possible for you to make it to another year, to enjoy what you do, to live in this awesome country we call America the greatest piece of dirt on the planet. My opinion, I, you know. So, so be, be thankful, and we love you all. And, 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 and from my love, Bone, and our family, uh, we do wish you a happy and prosperous Thanksgiving. And we look forward to seeing you next week. And if we could possibly put um, Mr. Nicholas's, if we can put his his Instagram handles or something online so that people can get it. He has an amazing ministry that he has also on Instagram. He has music. If you're here on Saturday mornings for prayer, there are times that we do play his music. So there's a time for you just to enter into the presence of God. So we want to, we want to acknowledge the gift that we have in the house and not ignore that. Can you, can you do that for us today? Yeah. Praise God. I was about to dismiss, but the Lord wanted me to tell you one more thing. Uh, for a long time, I, I was, I, I, I had problems believing certain, I'm, 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 I'm a skeptic, at least I was. But the Lord showed me you cannot be in faith and be a skeptic. Because when you are not believing, you're not believing. So the things that God want to get to you, you won't receive them if he said them to you, if they came from people. See, the, 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 the world of prophecy took such a, a hit. Uh, for me, it was hard for me to believe people. I just thought everybody was lying, truthfully. But the Lord showed me something. He does nothing on the planet without revealing it through a person. Seers are one of the greatest gifts that the body of Christ have, but it's one of the ones that have been under attack the most. Why am I telling you this? Some of you sat in here, and because it's not normal, you could not receive it. I need for you to be with great expectation and expect God to send someone across your pathway that will read your mail. See, don't do a return to sender on that. You receive that. And, and, and when we talk about this, oh, where did he go? Where did he go? Well, he's somewhere. Oh, there he goes. When, when we talk about uh, Nicholas, this was, my, I've been knowing, we've been knowing his parents for years, but this was our first time laying eyes on him. Well, the Lord used him to say some things to us that only the Lord and us would know. Why am I telling you that? Wasn't expecting it, but at least we were in posture so that when God want to do something, we can receive it and we don't block it. And some of what he revealed to us that the Lord was saying, it was in your favor. So imagine if your pastors are locked down and say, no, he's a kid compared. I got children older than him. He can't tell me nothing. Well, guess what? I just did a return to sender on what God had for this house. So, so be in the right posture because why? There's a new season that's occurring. The Love of Life Church that you have known, it is fading away. God is rebuilding, redesigning, redeveloping, redirecting what we do. So we need for you to expect the supernatural. You expect it. And oh God, it's going to be great. And those of you that be on Journey Through Faith, you already know uh, how Pastor talked to the lady in pink. Yeah, yeah, he talks. But you got to be in the posture to listen. We love you so much. Do you have anything else? Happy Thanksgiving. We love you guys. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Hold up, hold up. Hold tight. Don't y'all dare leave. Come on. <laughs> hey, Love Alive Church. Uh, First, I just want to uh, do my formalities. I'm very happy to be here with you guys, being able to celebrate my parents, but as well as you all. 
Um, they definitely are gems that definitely qualified. Uh, so I just praise God that they have a home that's that loves the Lord. Amen. Because not every place that calls themselves a church loves the Lord. <clears throat> um, I just wanted to exhort you guys in this, um, kind of what Pastor was talking about. First off, I love God, and I love how intentional He is. When um, <laughs> when Pastor asked me uh, to to minister, I didn't know what I was going to do, and I had one song. Like when I, I tell you, I had my notes out. I had one song, and the Lord guided it so well. And what we ended up was exactly what he talked to me about. I think it was, I think it was yesterday, yesterday morning about this church. I said, Lord, what are you saying? The only thing that I heard was him saying he was revitalizing your prayer lives. And I was like, as soon as I, I don't remember what, what thing I hit or what, what, I, what song I sang, but it went along with the prayer. And I was like, ha, ha, ha. It was one of my laughs. And I was like, okay, God, I see you. I see you. That, that, that's what the laugh meant. But I want to exhort you guys that the Lord is really coming for your prayer lives. And where you felt dry and where you felt like there wasn't, um, you weren't feeling his presence. Because a lot of you all, some of you all, I'm sorry, some of you all, have been in your prayer time, <clears throat> in your time with God. And this, this is what the Lord is sharing with me. That you've been in your prayer time and you haven't necessarily felt his presence. You haven't necessarily felt his nearness. And what you were doing was going out of religion. You were going out of obligation. You were saying, Lord, I'm required to do this, so I'm going to do it. But I heard God say that he's coming and he's bringing revival to your prayer lives. And it's going to look completely different. When he talked about the supernatural, what I'll exhort you is say, read your Bible. And when you read it, whatever you saw in the New Testament church, expect it here. Whatever you saw in the New Testament church, expect it here. I'm, I'm telling you, this is a blueprint, I promise you, because I've seen it time and time again, looking even at revival history and at churches, the Lord will sometimes even go over the set man or the set woman, and he will drop something in the house, not because of them, because of the hunger of the people, mm -hmm. because of expectation. So as you raise your ex expectation, he's already spoken to them. Not, not just, I'm not just talking about through me, I'm, I'm talking about, I know he's spoken to them privately about where this church is going. So one, believe that he's speaking to your leaders, but then also believe in the God of the Bible. That's, that's, what, that's if the one thing that I can tell you walk away with, go back to your Bible and if what you're seeing, your reality, what your belief system doesn't match up to what God says he is and what he demonstrates in his word, shift it. Yes. Bible says, <laughs> we believe, but God help our unbelief. So really allow him to deal with the place of unbelief as it pertains to miracles, as it pertains to healing, as it pertains to God doing the thing that he said he was going to do. Because, And I'm, I know this is a general thing amongst the body of Christ, but I do believe it's something here that a lot of people are discouraged because they didn't see it happen in their own life. But let me tell you something, and I'm a witness of it. God will sometimes use you to do the very thing that seemingly didn't happen in your life for somebody else. Because he wants to test your character. He wants to see, are you really about my kingdom? Is his will or the highway? I was just talking to my wife about this last night. I sometimes think, and this is my last thing, I'm leaving you all with this. Because I want you to meditate on it. What? It, oh, I, <laughs> I thought he was dropping me by myself. I was like, stay, stay with me, man. Um, <laughs> but I sometimes think, what is God going to ask me to do? And, and when he asks me to do it, Am I going to be willing to do it? Because the churchy response, the good, good old church response is, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And then he says, Go over there and tell him this. And you're like, No, Lord. No, Lord. No, Lord. But, but really getting in your heart, I want to say yes to you, whatever the cost. Lay your reputation down. Be willing to be, thank you, Lord. Be willing to be wrong for the gospel's sake. That's, that, that's my final thing. Be willing to be wrong for the gospel's sake. Don't try to be right in, in culture's eyes, in your family's eyes. You stick to what the word says, and I promise you, you'll be all right. God bless you guys. Thank you.
Bye.